Um, hello, I'm Cara, and today I'm going to be interviewing my local sporting hero. So, um, first thanks for coming, oh, hero. <laughs> I haven't got that before. <laughs> um, thanks for coming. Thank you. Firstly, can you tell us a bit about your childhood and how you got your nickname? Right. Well, the nickname actually came from the boxing. Um, years ago, up in Barcroft Park, I grew up in housing state here in Newry and years ago the summers used to be a wee bit warmer and they used to have boxing fights and they used to put the ring up in the barley field to have it for football and stuff like that and when I was about eight before I get into the ring some kid was giving me a wee bit of lip so I started to fight with him before I went into the ring and before you know it I ended up fighting with him and his mother grabbed me, grabbed me by the air and says Stop hitting my son or I'll banjo you, banjo, ban him. And from that day, everybody called me banjo. At the time, I didn't like it. I just remember getting in the ring and fighting for real, and people started shouting banjo, and of course, I didn't like it. And the more you didn't like something, they'll call you it anyway. So that's just stuck. Um, what schools did you go to? I went to the Abbey CBS primary school, and then I went to St. Joseph's. Uh, Secondary school, then I went to the Neary Technical School and then I did fit and welding and I did that. I did part-time outdoor education and then I went into Manchester University and then Jordanstown University for a degree. How did you get into mountain climbing? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I suppose there was a lot of sports going up. My main sport was boxing. But I wasn't really good at the Gaelic, tried the Gaelic, tried hurling, tried a wee bit of soccer. Um, and Thompson's Quarry, just up behind us in Camla, there was a big bit of a cliff. And I remember I climbed up it with no problem. And all the boys, I thought they could do it and they couldn't. And I just thought that I could do something. You know, I wasn't really scared um, of any of the heights and stuff like that. Um, then I got into sort of outdoor education and pursuits with my sister was a youth worker and introduced me to Shannockmore and Cologne and places like that and then I became an instructor there and then from there I started to um, excel more in mountaineering and canoeing uh, and then from that I travel around the world climbing different mountains and stuff like that there. How did it feel to climb Mount Everest? Yeah, Severs was, uh, I suppose it's like a, a school dream. I always tell people, always follow your dreams. And that was a dream of mine at the age of about 14, believe it or not. And I remember saying it to the, the kids at school, I, I did a few climbs in the mornings. And I come back one time from it and it said that I will climb the highest mountain in the world. And they all laughed at me. And the way I did it was I made a roadmap for myself to see, okay, how can I... First of all, you know, achieve that objective and that's when I started to do the training. And once I got onto the summit, all the dreams and all the thoughts and all the hard work, you know, the training that you do beforehand and all, was ended up there with no Sherpas or anybody's help, um, ended up there on my own. So the feeling was ecstatic. I got really good weather and um, it's like, Winning the All Ireland or whatever, winning the World Cup, and you're like that. The only thing is, there's nobody, <laughs> nobody around to see you going like that. Um, but it felt really good and a good sense of achievement and fulfilment. What was the worst part of the time? Um, there was a lot of worst parts of somebody was killed that I got to know um, really well. They were killed a few weeks into it. Um, the cold. I suppose what you see is sometimes you see the photographs and the smiles, but what you don't do see is the real bad weather. You don't take your camera out. Um, you've got headaches. Your teeth sometimes there's wee holes in your teeth. It'll your fillings fall out. You get compression, uh, soreness in your chest because of the lack of oxygen. Um, you get the runs. You get the food is very hard to keep down your throat. Um, the cold feet, the cold hands constantly. So all the romanticism sort of out of it, you know, and what you don't see is it's the hard work. And obviously it's very boring. It's exciting when you're actually on the move, but sometimes you're stuck in a tent 
for days on end because of the bad weather and you can't move because of ambulance risk and stuff like that. So there's a lot of factors in there, you know, good points and bad points. Who was your inspiration and why? Um, I suppose my inspiration was actually my mother. Um, when I was growing up economically, socially and politically, Mary was in a bit of a turmoil. My father died at the age of three, so she actually brought the rest of us up. We are a big family. Um, and from all that growing up, and you know, people think that they, you know, about the 11 plus and stuff like that, you think that you're going to be a failure at the age of 11, but yet you can go on and achieve anything that you wanted. So she kept pushing me on no matter what happened, you know, and any sport that I get into, if it was boxing on, she was 100%, you know, with me and encouraged me and stuff like that there. So she was my inspiration. Do you do any other sports? Uh, yes, I do. I like a bit of canoeing. Um, I like going to the gym, rock climbing, um, and a bit of fell running, you know, just out for a wee run. But I don't like running around the roads. I like running up a mountain, through a forest and stuff like that. What was the most memorable time in your sporting life? Uh, well, believe it or not, it's all the it's everybody thinks it's uh, Everest and stuff like that. I suppose my best time on a mountain was probably on the north faces of um, the north faces of, of a lot of climbs in the Alps, and also K two. It's another mountain that I was on, and uh, probably my most, you know. Best memories are because of technical stuff and how I felt at the time felt really good. I suppose that was my, obviously, Everest being the pinnacle, but apart from that, the most satisfaction was climbing on, on different other mountains. You know, that was very challenging and a lot of things happened, you know. How did it feel when your son became the youngest person to climb Kilimanjaro? Very proud. Um, people would say to me, what was uh, the most, you know, we met this moment and people always think that it's going to be Everest and stuff like that. I was actually seeing my children being born and um, so, so, so proud of him because I know it's very hard, you know, he was sick on the summit and stuff like that. For him to push himself through the hardship of, you know, not sleeping well, the cold, the, his headaches, the stuff like that there, the puking and the things that people don't see. I was so, so proud of him and just really admire him you know and uh, yeah it feels good and say you know that he and he wants to do it for himself but I, I don't like to push him in anything but I told him anything that he wants to do that I'll back him 100% you know. What advice would you give to young people interested in mountaineering? Um, enjoy it you get to see the world I've went in most countries around the world um, it's a good excuse to travel um, it's exciting. The only thing is I have lost about 16 to 18 friends. Um, it's a dangerous sport. It depends on what you do. There's different aspects of mountaineering. There's the rock climbing, the ice climbing to the high Himalayan you know, expedition of South America. Um, enjoy it. Um, and it's not, it's, the big thing is can you suffer? Because you have to be able to suffer to do big mountains. That's what I would tell people. And, no matter what you're, you, you, you ch want to achieve, you have to put in a wee bit of hard work. It doesn't come easy to you. Nobody's going to hand you in the plate. And follow your dreams. Have you got any events coming up in the future? I have a few. I've been asked to take a few people um, climbing on big mountains. It could be Everest again in 2020, but I don't know if it will or not. Um, I am away next Monday. I, I still guide, so do, so I'm taking people ice claim to Scotland and probably next year I'm going to take some people to Alaska to do a wee bit of climb there. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.